G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about stretching, but more specifically, we're gonna talk about an aspect of stretching that I think gets missed a lot, and I think it's really important to talk about because if you're someone who um, stretches a lot, you invest a lot of your time and energy every day, or if you're trying to achieve something, whether that's you know, injury prevention, uh, pre or post activity, whether you're trying to rehab an injury, or whether you just wanna move and feel better day to day, there's one crucial piece of the puzzle that you have to be aware of. Otherwise, your stretching routine will probably ultimately prove ineffective in terms of you can be spending all this time stretching muscles, trying to do the right thing in the hope that it's gonna make you a better athlete or it's gonna prevent injury. But if you're not also talking about this broader aspect of stretching, um, you might actually be wasting your time. And I think it's really important because the I guess the culture around stretching is one that it's just something that you have to keep doing. That there's not necessarily an end point to stretching something. Most people who stop stretching ultimately do so because they're sick of it or they get to the point where they don't naturally feel like it's doing them any good long term. So you can't fault people who sort of fall off the back of the wagon because they're not getting the results that they're after. So now we've spoken on the channel before about different types of stretching. There's the contractural relax or the, the PNF, the proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation type stretching, which involves getting into a stretched position, tensing the tight muscle for five to 10 seconds, relaxing, going further. It's by far one of the best ways to stretch any muscular tightness if you're looking for instant improvements. But whether you're doing the PNF type stretching, whether you're using a power band or a, or a jump stretch bands, which we'll show in a second, um, to get to the underlying, uh, the underlying joint stiffness. If you're doing those two fantastic techniques, you'll clearly make some fantastic immediate gains to your flexibility. But the common point that happens all too much with people who stretch is we're often back doing the same stretch again the next day and the next day and the next day. And once we start that process of stretching a muscle or stretching a joint, we're never really given the tools or the perspective to get to a point where we don't have to do it anymore, where we've conquered that part of the body, um, we don't have to worry about it anymore, and we can go about our daily lives. So what I wanted to talk about in today's video is that concept of what you need to think about to make sure that you have an end point in mind, that there's some things that you need to tick off, that if you're doing these correctly and consistently, you won't have to do the stretches to a point forever. And I think it's really important because we want to get you to a point where you feel good, you've done the rehab, where you've got yourself to where you want to be, and you can just put your time and effort into something else. So, so I thought I'd talk about it in terms of uh, three main muscle groups that tend to get tight. So we'll talk about it in terms of the calf muscles, we'll include the hamstrings in the conversation, and we'll also talk about the upper trap muscles. Now, at least in my experiences, and clearly there's other muscles that get really tight on a lot of people, but I think most people watching this video um, probably have some tightness in their calves, some tightness in their hamstrings, and probably some tightness in the, the base of the neck and their upper traps. Now, one of the big misconceptions that I also want to clear up in this video is that even if you feel like you've always been tight, or that you're just someone who is tight, that's not necessarily true. Um, it'll make more sense towards the end of the video once we start talking about the deeper features of that muscular tightness. But the question that I want to give to you guys today, and we'll hopefully answer that in a second, is why is that muscle tight in the first place? So if we're not talking about, if we're not having a conversation about, you know, uh, why the upper traps have become tight, why the calves have become tight, why your hamstrings have become tight, then just stretching those muscles consistently every day is not going to cure that tightness. It's not going to get you past that tightness so you can invest your time into something else. All it's going to do is you're going to do a stretch, hopefully a fantastic one with the PNF stretching and the power bands, but ultimately it's gonna re-tighten again, or those muscles are gonna to continue to tighten again because the thing that's asking them to be tight in the first place hasn't been focused on as well. So that's what we wanna cover in today's video. I wanna arm you guys with a perspective to know what you need to do to conquer that tightness long-term. So in terms of calf stretching, the, the main thing we wanna talk about first is uh, tight calves are a consequence of something else, and that something else is often underlying joint stiffness. So if you're someone who wears uh, flip-flops or thongs, depending on where you are in the world, um, or you get around in shoes with a heel, so any heel at the back, it can be a women's heel, it can be a men's business shoe, it can be a kid's shoe that has some differential between the front and the back. 
if you're living in those type of shoes day in, day out, then you're not being able to express normal foot and ankle function, particularly in a heel. And we've said this before, but the size of the heel of your shoe is the exact amount of range that you don't get allowed to use or you don't get access to for the amount of time that you're in that shoe. So as we all know, if you don't use something, then the body tends to sort of pull its resources somewhere else. So you tend to lose that. So if you're not consistently expressing that full range of ankle motion, then it eventually becomes stiff and then the calf muscle around that becomes tight, um, potentially as a compensatory mechanism. So, so if you're doing something really, really simple, so in terms of stretching the calf, you can do this off a step, obviously. But one thing I like to do is to do it up against a wall. So this is more the muscular stretch. So um, keeping the legs straight, squeezing the glutes, coming up and pushing that hip to the wall, you should feel a really nice stretch in through the calf muscle. If you want to hit the deeper soleus muscle, you can bend the knee a little bit and you should feel it a little bit down lower, sort of lower down towards the Achilles. Now, as you've probably seen before on the channel, we can spend a lot of time uh, stretching those calf muscles. But if you're not ultimately having a conversation about the underlying joint stiffness and the shoes and footwear that you wear, that calf muscle is always going to need to be stretched because you're not giving it any other choice. So one of the exercises that I would definitely add on top of that is with this power band. So again, I don't know if you can see this very well on camera. I've just got the band around the base of my ankle, sort of just above uh, the ankle bone itself. You can play around with it. Ideally, you want to have the band pulling straight behind, but it's on a bit of an angle for the purposes of this. And all you need to do here is with your hips past your foot, so we're not squatting down on it, we're stepping past the ankle and we're trying to bend that back ankle as far as you feel comfortable without the heel coming up. And the other thing that we always try and promote here is we don't want that knee to cave in. So it's easy to come off into this angle to get around that ankle stiffness, but we want to go into that ankle stiffness, if not a little bit out in that direction. So we're doing that from, from this position. So spending two minutes here, three minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes if you can be bothered. The more time you can spend here, either oscillating in and out of that end range or hanging out at the end of that range. We need to invest some time with a band around that ankle, sort of separating that rusty joint stiffness so that those calf muscles don't feel the need to consistently tighten. So, so again, if you're someone who always struggles with tight calves, you've got to stretch the calf clearly to undo that tightness, but you've got to free up the, the ankle stiffness and have a really strong consideration um, behind or around the type of shoes that you wear day to day. Ideally, you want to be sort of flatter with less heel, more of a minimalist shoe if possible, but something to, I guess, to talk about in another video. But as I was saying, Tight calves often mean stiff ankles and some type of footwear that isn't necessarily ideal for you. So you've got to address that broader picture if you want to stop needing to stretch those calf muscles. So that's number one. Number two, we're talking about hamstring tightness. A really common one. So many people feel like they've always had tight hamstrings or they're just someone who has tight hamstrings. But the often missed piece of the puzzle for hamstring tightness is a lot of people don't realize that it almost any and all hamstring dysfunction, so that can be just tightness, it can be hamstring tears, hamstring tendonitis, any pain injury dysfunction or tightness as a whole is back related until proven otherwise. So the overwhelming majority of um, hamstring tightness is your brain trying to help out low back dysfunction. So again, if you're stretching, you're doing the really good you know, hamstring stretches where you throw your leg up on something, lean forward, you feel a great stretch through here, spend all this time trying to free it up. But if we're not looking after that lower back function, then that hamstring is always going to be recruited and tightened up to help stabilize, I guess, a centerpiece or the spine that isn't necessarily functioning normally. And by functioning normally, clinically, we're often looking for lower back stiffness, lower back tightness. Um, but again, a lot of that ties into the postures and the positions that people get into. So much like a stiff ankle becomes stiff because we put it in a, a position that it doesn't like long term. The same thing with the back. So when we're looking from sort of the rib cage, the base of the rib cage down to the base of your spine, anything in between this area has the potential to ask those hamstrings to be tighter than they need to be. So if you're going to go through the, the hassle of trying to stretch those hamstrings, we need to find a way to mobilize your lower back to make it looser uh, and more functional beyond any strength and conditioning conversations, which we can have another time. But purely from a mobility perspective, 
if there's stiffness and tightness in that lower back, that hamstring is gonna consistently be asked to stay tight long-term. Any hamstring stretching regime is only gonna be as effective as what you then do with your lower back. So if you're not addressing that lower back stuff, you're gonna be in this consistent cycle, this consistent loop of having to stretch those hamstrings consistently um, without ever necessarily making ground over time. So, and hopefully if you're someone who's had tight hamstrings for a while and you're willing to try this out, you'll hopefully see that things really can take a strong leap forward in a very short amount of time just by mobilizing the lower back. So, so to do this, we generally have two really good options that I like. We can use a foam roller, we can use a lacrosse ball. We use the lacrosse ball up a little bit higher for the upper trap stuff in a second, but for the purposes of this, I'll just show you with the foam roller. So, so the main reason I want to show you with the foam roller is because I think the other misconception that I want to make sure I make very clear in this video is you don't need to roll around on the spine. Um, ultimately, we're looking for the, the individual segments of the spine, the spinal levels that are stiff. And if you're rolling around on top of that, you're never necessarily getting um, adequate pressure through a joint, asking that joint to move slowly and creep slowly over time. So, so for me, what I like to do is just move around until you feel like you hit a spot that feels a little bit stiff. Um, you can attack this two ways. You can have a big pillow behind you and then just recline backwards over that to a point that you feel comfortable with. For me, I like to come from the other end where I find some stiffness here and then just gently tension it up through my spine. Uh, again, I'm relatively mobile, so I can handle that relatively comfortably. But the idea is I want you to hunt up and down, left and right, looking for those areas of stiffness and tightness and spend enough time on a spot until you feel like it starts to give. So that could be 30 seconds, it could be a minute, it could be two minutes. Put the TV on, watch some Netflix, watch something. Just spend a whole chunk of time just segmentally looking for that stiffness and tightness and allowing it to free up. And one of the best things about this is once you've freed up your lower back, if you did some, some hamstring stretching beforehand, freed up your lower back and did the same hamstring stretches afterwards, you should feel like you can get further into that stretch or there's less muscular tightness straight away just to give you confidence that those two things are connected. So you don't have to take my word for it. Please do some testing and retesting so you can see exactly the levels that you need to be at that are going to make those hamstrings looser um, over time. So, so again, if we're not freeing up the back, those hamstrings aren't going to be allowed to be loose and free despite all the, the fantastic stretches that you're doing. Um, we want to play the long game where we're freeing up the back so that the hamstrings can exist normally. And then as I said, much like putting your, uh, your feet in less heeled shoes or getting out of thongs or flip-flops and into sandals, we also need to make sure that the positions that you're putting your back into aren't asking those areas themselves to be stiff and tight. So if you're in a nice upright position with some pillows behind your back when you sit in this position, those stiff segments that you're locating won't be allowed to stay stiff. They'll free up over time as well. But if you, if you get into positions where you're sort of sinking into a chair, not necessarily thinking about it too much, then obviously it's gonna stay stiff here as well. So it's the same concept that we're talking about with the muscular stuff to the back. If you're not treating the cause, the root cause of that stuff, then it's hard to expect that to, to improve dramatically over time. So, so that's the calf and that's the hamstring, two really common ones that are often really stiff and tight on a lot of people and stay that way. But hopefully, as you can start to appreciate, it doesn't have to stay that way if you're taking a step back and then getting into the deeper root cause of that tightness. Now, the third one is sort of a mixture of both in a sense where when we're looking at this upper trap tightness, um, again, what a lot of people don't realize is when you're doing all these sort of trap stretches and stretching the muscle, the upper traps are often only tight because the joints underneath, the, the neck joints, the upper back joints, and more importantly, the rib joints right, right up the top here that are directly underneath that muscle, if they get stiff and tight, then that muscle has to become tight uh, to help out. Or it, it may not necessarily be a linear process where the joints become stiff and then the muscles get tight over the top. Often it's a collaboration or it happens at the same time. But the point being is that if you're stretching all this, you're doing all these fantastic stretches for your upper traps and your neck muscles, maybe your scalenes, um, and you're not also addressing the underlying joint stiffness in your neck and upper back and rib cage, then again, you're not gonna solve it long term. You're gonna have to keep doing the stretches forever because you're not getting to the root cause. So a great way to do that, again, as we've done on the channel before, you can grab a tennis ball or, or a lacrosse ball what we want to do basically is we want to place the ball, uh, we can start on the neck, but we're going to come out to the, the rib cage a little bit in a second. Now you can do this lying down on your back, but I'll do it up against the wall for the purposes of the video. 
So all we want to do here is I'm starting with the ball right in the middle, sort of about this level here. I'm just letting the ball roll off to one side, getting a sense for where that stiffness is. You can move it a little bit further out if you want to get onto the ribs themselves. You can move the ball up or down depending on where you feel you need to be. But your job for five or 10 minutes is to go hunting for where all of that stiffness is up into the neck, out to the side, around the back, through the ribs, and down through the, the thoracic spine, that upper back as well. As soon as you find something that feels stiff, you want to just stay there and hang out. Now, if this is relatively comfortable for you and you want to ramp it up a little bit, I'd always suggest then using your arm to sort of leverage more progress. So as this arm comes up, you need a lot of normal range of motion through these joints. So by blocking it with the ball and then lifting your arm up, you can really help shear free some of that stiffness uh, relatively quickly. So again, we want to make sure we're clearing some of that underlying stiffness and tightness so that the joints in that area are nice and free and then those muscles don't have to stay tight to help support that area. Now, the other thing to note, much like the footwear and the postures in regards to the calf muscle and the hamstring muscle, we also have to have a strong conversation about your postural habits in regards to these muscles up here. So one of the things that we often see, again, we know that if the back hinges a lot, Wherever that hinge goes in the back uh, often becomes stiff over time. It's the same things with what your shoulders are doing. Now, what you'll hopefully have picked up, particularly if you've been watching these videos before, is that as those shoulders drop and roll forwards, the weight of the arm basically via the muscles attaches into this area and just hangs off that part of the body. So again, if you're doing all these stretches to free it up, you're freeing up all the stiffness and tightness here, trying to do your best efforts, and then you're consistently putting it back in this position, whether it's on a mouse, a keyboard, um, whether you're sitting this way in the car or if it's the other side and you're in the center console, even if you're just sitting down in a chair watching some TV in a bad position, you've got to have a conversation about trying to maintain a better shoulder position, which again, isn't necessarily back and, and down, sorry, it's more back and up slightly because it's the opposite of the down and forwards that happens when we tend to slap. So, so hopefully those three examples are really helpful just to better frame the idea that we're trying to promote here that general stretching in isolation is ultimately ineffective long term. It's the reason why people have to just keep doing same stretches every single day uh, without ever necessarily conquering them. Um, and there's some great people out there that just do them because they've been told to. But hopefully we can present you with a slightly broader perspective to say, look, keep stretching those muscles. But if you're not necessarily seeing that you're having to stretch it less or that you're actually improving your mobility over time, then you've got to make sure you're looking for those underlying stiffnesses and make sure that how you're using them or how you're positioning those areas is somewhat normal. So if your posture sucks, that's the first place to start. If you sit a lot, that's a great place to start. If you wear a certain type of shoe that has a heel or is a thong or a flip-flop that you have to hold on to, something that isn't a normal experience for the foot, these are things you need to consider to try and eliminate these things long term. And I think just to finish up, no one really has to care about this sort of stuff. It's not that interesting. Um, it may not be that interesting for a lot of people, but it's one of those things that as soon as you conquer it, then you can move on to something else. It's well worth your time. So instead of investing 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes stretching every day, you can do that initially, conquer it, then just move on to something more fun and interesting. So uh, hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was actionable and interesting for you guys. Um, if you did find it interesting, please leave a like down below. Uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know if there's any particular muscles that you're having trouble stretching over time. Uh, if you're someone who just feels like you have been always tight in certain areas, let us know. We can help guide you through maybe what you need to do on top of that to, to nail the underlying root cause, the thing that's asking that to be there long term. Uh, and obviously, if you like this kind of content, if you're someone who enjoys sort of nerding out a little bit with me, um, please consider subscribing. It really helps support the channel. Um, ultimately, we want these videos to get out to as many people as possible because they're just concepts that, that I talk about with patients um, every day, talk about with people every day that seems to help a lot of people in a lot of great ways. So if you want to be a part of that, please consider subscribing and share this around to people who you think might find it useful. Um, that would really help us out. So, um, so thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully that was really fun and interesting. Um, and until the next one, I guess we'll see you soon.